Uh, we're going to start, of course, with Hot Tub Time Machine. Ben Mankiewicz, take it away. Hot Tub Time Machine, very uh, complicated uh, setup. Uh, uh, you may want to write this down. Uh, three friends and one of the friends' uh, uh, nephews uh, are set in the present day. Uh, their lives are not what they expect. One of the friends is uh, depressed. Uh, so, uh, led by John Cusack, they go uh, on a, to a, a winter retreat uh, where they used to go, and they go into a hot tub, uh, which sends them back uh, to 1986. Uh, and uh, we have a trailer. Let's do it. Oh. Go. All right. Look, 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 what are we gonna do? You guys are terrible at quarters. Let's break into a school or uh, steal a cop car or something, huh? Do you have Ritalin? What? Guys, come look at this. You don't think it's a little weird, a bunch of guys just piling up in a big bathtub together? It's called male bonding, okay? Haven't you even seen wild hogs? Watch out, here I come. Come, come, come. What the hell happened last night? Is there some kind of retro thing going on this weekend? There's something going on with here. Dude is rocking a cassette player. Leg warmers. I'm sure there's a good explanation for all this. Jerry girl! Excuse me, miss. What color is Michael Jackson? Black. Manifest 86! I don't understand how we back in time! I'm so scared. Must be some kind of hot tub time machine. This March, this is a very special model that you have here. You know exactly what's going on here, don't you, old man? <laughs> Come on! It's the 80s! Let's do what we want! Free love! Hey! Let's get this party started! Mom? Forget the present! <laughs> Why did I ever break up with him? What was I thinking? Wow! And now the universe is giving me another shot. This is gonna be the best weekend like ever. Mm. 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 I feel pregnant. Change the future. There's money to be made here, man. We could invent iPods, Prius, Match.com, short rims. We could combine uh, Viagra with Twitter. What? Twitagra. Boom! And kick some past. You're breaking up with me? That's not how this happens. Do you know what happens to you? You get fat. I mean, like, fat. Oh! Hot tub time machine. Could I text you later? Wait, what? Are you online at all? I have no idea what you're saying. How do I get a hold of you? Come find me. That just sounds exhausting. All right, you know what? I thought this movie was going to suck. I mean, it's called Hot Tub Time Machine. But I don't think it did. Uh, and I know I'm the Paul Abdul of this panel. <laughs> okay. But here's what I did throughout this movie. Laughed. Okay. I had a good time. And I know I like a comedy when I think, like, maybe I should rent that again or maybe grab a DVD if it's cheap to remember some of the lines because some of the lines were funny. There, I said it. Go. Uh, you know, I, I can't say you're wrong completely. Mm -hmm. um, Although you are, are wrong about being the Paul Abdul of this panel because you're sober. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you, you can't know, tell from my reviews. I, this movie's okay. It's, and I it's... don't want to date you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, for a movie that has a silly present, uh, premise. premise as it is, it kind of works, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's got funny lines when it needs to happen, fun, be funny. But what kind of took the movie down for me a little bit is that it just felt cheap. It just felt like, I don't know, it just felt like kind of movie 101. It's, it, it, it didn't feel like there was are, any are you craft a, to it. Are you pulling I, a jank and saying it didn't have a proper gloss on it? Uh, you know, the, I, I'm, it, I didn't come out of there feeling like, now that's a movie. Yes, <laughs> that's, I, I will say that. Now, don't get me wrong, I did enjoy the film. Do I think that, you know, whereas something like, say, The Hangover felt like a movie. It felt like a bigger deal. This really very obviously was shot on sets the whole time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know, the production values felt low. That's a really weird critique to have, I suppose. But, you know, that being said, it's funny. It's not too gross. It's got a little bit of heart. The soundtrack is fantastic. Here, here's what I'm hearing from Matt. Uh, grab a rental when it comes out. Gra grab a couple of brewskis and grab a couple of guys, and, yeah. and you know, and it could be kind of fun. It's, I'd go further, but let me, let's hear from Ben. 
Uh, I think the soundtrack is only good if you were 19 years old in 1986, as I was. How old are you, Matt? I was 16 years old. All right. I mean, that's what I'm saying. If you were 14 through 21, I mean, if that's your era of music, I think it works very well. My hunch is it won't work for people who are younger who don't Just care about so that sad. music. You I know, I think 16. the 80s are a horrible generation. I mean, I love the 80s because that's, because, you know, we can't pick and choose. Look, that was the formative years. I was, you know, I was 13 to 23. It's an unfortunate time to be 13 through 23. But that's the way it went, you know. <laughs> so you know, I mean, you know, that's the well, way exactly. it goes. We missed the free love. We, we missed, missed all the like. Not only did we miss free love, we entered college at a time when we were like, "My God, if you kiss, you will die." Yeah. You know, um, AIDS and Ronald Reagan. Right, AIDS and Ronald Reagan. So uh, uh, I thought not only did it seem cheap, it felt like you know the right. There are only three guys in the writing credits, including uh, Sean Anders and John uh, Morris, who were the two guys responsible for "She's Out of My League." which is, you know, you mentioned that it had heart. I thought it had essentially no heart, whereas She's Out of My League, I thought, had uh, tremendous heart. Um, I, I like a lot of the guys uh, uh, in this movie. I, I like uh, Rob Corddry. I like, I, like, I like John Cusack. I like Craig Robinson. They've been in a lot of good stuff. Um, I didn't like any of them here. Really? I liked, I no, mean, I it, loved them. I, I, liked I them, loved them. I liked them in a lot of stuff. You like everything. You like, you sit in front of, <laughs> you sit in front of a movie theater and, and, and you're like a guy who's like, oh, I love it. The screen is so big. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but you have to, it, it's true though. They yeah. are. They're it's enormous. like it's in color and it's huge. This is fantastic. They don't have this in Turkey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait, and now you're going to go back to 1978. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, I just thought this felt short and a lot not horrible I laughed at some stuff too and I and I'm after I give my grade I'm going to concede that uh, you know uh, that maybe it's a little low and maybe when I see it on cable in six months I might come up another half point but uh, you know I, I I thought like for example when the guys come in and learn that it's 1986 and that you know some of the stuff seems funny in an independent some of the stuff seems funny in an independent moment when those guys come in and, and you know what color is Michael Jackson black but that stuff all happens in like 45 seconds they walk into a ski lodge and find out it's 1986 as if the ski lodge one has 12 cameras going in every single thing that happens in 1986 happens at once there's no clever way of spacing out these images Ronald Reagan's talking about Iran Iran Contra David Bowie says I want my MTV they get the Jerry curls they get every single the Michael Jackson reference every single thing happens at once they don't space out any 1986 reference it's all at once I thought there was almost nothing clever about 1986 throughout the film I, see he's gonna make me go over the top because look I I, I thought Rob Corddry was excellent I Craig Robinson as always Look, the moment the movie that won me over, you saw it in the trailer, when he says, I was like, Hot Tub Time Machine. How are you going to name right. a movie and Hot Tub Time Machine? he does the camera take, right? That was right. great. That was right. great. When he looks at the Hot Tub Time Machine, he's like... That was great. I okay, I was it. like, you know what? All right. So they say, that's them saying, come on, we know this is asinine, right? Right. But it's a freaking comedy. Let's have some fun. But they right? did it all at once. They well, but there were some other parts I thought were funny in the movie, right? Like... The continuing gag about when Crispin Glover was going to, or even if he was going to lose his arm, I too. thought was funny, right? They dragged that out, and then... That had the nothing to when, do with the 80s, though. No, it didn't, but I thought that they did do some funny bits with the concept of time travel and what you would do if you were going back, but and you knew things were going to happen, right? So ruined that, by every time Chevy Chase was in the movie, which was horrible. No, I agree. Horrible. I don't think he belonged to that movie. No, I, I, except, I, except as an acknowledgement of right. his success in the 80s. Well, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it was more like, what, what are we going to do to actually... You understand? One Make word a point. came out of his mouth. No, no yeah. I, not at all. I mean, I feel like the Chevy Chase was in there just so that it was, you know, we have to have some kind of exposition, give them some reason to leave, yeah. right? Something to work for. And I didn't think that was particularly good. But the one scene I do want to point out is when Craig Robinson calls his then nine year old wife. I thought it was hilarious. I thought that was really funny. Yeah, and funny. so I think conceptually, and kind of like these guys did with. Um, with their other movie, She's, with out, She's of out of My League. League, I thought there were moments that they could have really transcended. And it makes me actually excited to see more out of them as they kind of get more confident. Because I feel like in the same vein, they had some interesting ideas and then felt like, well, we got to kind of dumb this down. we got to make it, we got to go for the cheap laugh. I thought they, uh -huh. where they, whenever they didn't dumb down She's Out of My League, and I thought they didn't, and these guys, uh, John Morris and Sean Anders, are clearly talented writers. And by the way, I thought Rob Corddry was good too. I think that he can't help but be good. He can't help but be funny. 
Um, and I saw Rob Riggle, by the way, another former Daily Show correspondent at a restaurant yesterday and wanted to like shake his hand just because I think he's so funny. And I think Rob Cordry is incredibly funny. And I think Craig Robinson is too. So I just thought, and those guys are good. I just thought the writing here and the way it was directed by, uh, by Steve Pink, I just thought in this case, it didn't come through the way they excelled at... at, at no, at, and I think part of it is they were, I, I suspect on a certain level, they were going for the kind of 80s comedy. When, and looking back at it with rose-colored glasses, really, because you look if you watch some of those '80s comedies like Porky's, no, Porky's well, is not a good movie, Porky's right? Is I, right. So, that's for party, not such a good movie. All okay, right, don't listen to these guys. <laughs> okay, you're gonna look. I'm not saying you should definitely see it in the movie theater with the big screen that they have these days, <laughs> uh, but uh, you should at <laughs> it least makes it look like a real movie. You should at least see it as a DVD rental, and you should at least be drunk. Okay. <laughs> And, you and, need to be drunk. Says no, the and, Paula Abdul. And, and let me tell you something, okay? Uh, this is where Ben makes me go over the top. I think this is the kind of movie that could be like Anchorman. The first time you watch it, you're like, yeah, it's pretty good, but there's something off, no. and there's something a little no. wrong. And then you watch it again, you're like, no, those lines were funny. Those lines were funny. Look, and here's my main criticism of it. And, and look, and I'll tell you what my score is. Overall, I'm giving it a 7.5, so I really liked it as a comedy, okay? No, but nobody's surprised by my high score. But the main criticism, it's, it's basically Hangover and 17 again, smushed together, okay? <laughs> that's, that's really what it is. Um, um, but what drives me crazy about all these going back in time movies is, and they did it a little bit here, but they should have done it more. Like, they're always hamstrung in some way. Like, in 17 again, he goes back, oh, but he's going to take care of his kids. In this one, they go back, but oh, they're going to do everything exactly the same. No, let him go. Let him go. Let him go nuts. Let him have sex. Let him be like, oh, I know something about her, and I'm going to get in her pants. I mean, they did it a little bit in this movie, so I didn't mind it. But overall, uh, give me more of that. But I'm telling you, you're going to think that some of these lines were excellent in this movie. Some of them were, some of them were funny. Look, it wasn't horrible. All right, so what's your score? Then? Look, I, I think they failed. I think overall they failed. They, 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 there was no, you didn't identify with any of the characters. Nobody seemed real to me. Not one person seemed real and authentic in this entire movie. So uh, overall, uh, I gave it a 4.5. I just thought it was a little below average. And, uh, and, and hopefully it'll come up to a 5 when I, maybe I was a little too harsh. Maybe it's a 5 and maybe when I see it later it comes up to a 5.5. I'm prepared to, con uh, to uh, consider that. But right now it's 4.5. I, I went into this movie with almost no expectations, kind of expecting the dumb comedy. It did make me laugh. It wasn't too offensive. So I'm giving it a six. I, I don't think it was a terrible failure. I don't think it's a ringing success. But I don't feel like it was a waste of time. So right. uh, for me, that's a six. And, you know, some of the jokes are way over the top. And I've actually gotten to the point where I'm not even loving that anymore. But, but nonetheless, <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah, uh, but nonetheless, I still liked it. And overall, with my high score, Ben's low score, we've come to the average of exactly what male, uh, uh, Matt did, I think, if I'm remembering right, 6.0. Yeah. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, a lot of variance. You make your own call.